in middle school, you probably, hopefully, saw the formula for circumference and area of a circle. In this lesson, we're looking to justify those formulas so that you see how reasonable the formulas are and that they're not just something that we made up. So, in this explore that the textbook has for us, they want us to explore the perimeter of polygons inscribed in a circle. And so you see that as I increase the number of sides of the polygon, it gets closer and closer to being a circle. So as I increase the number of sides of the polygon, the perimeter of the polygon is going to get closer and closer to the circumference of the circle. So we're going to use a formula for perimeter in order to approximate a formula for circumference. So in this diagram, we have R, the radius of the circle, and then we have triangle AOB. So if I draw a segment from O to M, the midpoint of segment AB, then I have angles 1 and 2 being formed, and notice that they have segment AM labeled as X. So triangle AOM would be congruent to triangle BOM by side, side, side. Since OA is congruent to OB because they're both radii of the same circle. AM is congruent to BM because M is the midpoint. And then segment OM is congruent to itself by reflexive. Therefore, angle 1 would be congruent to angle 2 by CPCTC. And since there are N triangles in this polygon that are all congruent to triangle AOB, then the measure of angle AOB would be 360 divided by N, because there's 360 degrees going around a point. And since angle 1 is half of angle AOB, it would be 360 over 2N, which is equivalent to 180 over N. Since I can conclude that triangle AOM is a right triangle, the sine of angle 1, remember a sine is opposite over hypotenuse, the sine of angle 1 would be X, which is opposite angle 1, over R, which is the hypotenuse. So sine of angle 1 equals X over R. And if I multiply both sides by R, I get this expression. And if I substitute in this for angle 1, now I have that x equals r times the sine of 180 over n. And now if I express the perimeter of this n-gon in terms of x, well, the length of AB is 2x. Because, whoops, AB equals AM plus MB. So if this is X, then so is this. Therefore, the perimeter of the N-gon would be 2X times N. Finally, if I substitute in this expression for X, then I have 2 R times the sine of 180 over N times N. And since our expression includes this, let's consider what happens to that number when n gets bigger and bigger. So they have us 
in the Explore activity using the table set up in your calculator, but some of you might not have a calculator that can do this. So what I have done is I graphed this as a function. And it looks like this. And so you see that after a while, it kind of levels out towards a number. And if I click on the graph, look at the Y coordinate. That's the second number. You see how it's slowly 3.134, 3.135, 3.136. And somewhere in the back of your brain, should be the memory that 3.14 approximately is the value of pi. So what happens to the value of x sine 180 over x as it x gets larger? It gets closer to pi. So look at the expression that we wrote for the perimeter of the n-gon. What happens to the value of this expression as n gets larger? It approaches two pi r, which you should remember is the formula for circumference that you learned in middle school. So when n is very large, does the perimeter of the n-gon ever equal the circumference of the circle no, because a polygon consists of sides. Or straight segments. That will not equal a circle. So let's use the formula for circumference to find circumference. In example one, part A, I am given a circle whose diameter is 40 feet. I am asked for the circumference. So they took the diameter, cut it in half in order to find the radius, and then plugged it back into 2 pi r. Some of you may find it helpful to realize that if c equals 2 pi r, think about what 2r is. That's a diameter. So another formula that you could use is circumference equals pi times diameter. So in example one, part B, it has us in the fill in the blanks that it has set up for us. It has us cutting the diameter in half just so we can multiply it by two all over again. So instead of that, let's just figure C equals pi times d, I know that my diameter is 2, so it's pi times 2, and it wants us to use 3.14 for pi, so 2 times 3.14 is approximately 6.28. Suppose we double the radius of a circle. How will the circumference of the larger circle compare with the circumference of the smaller circle? So let's say the small r, let's call it r1. So the circumference would be 2 pi times r1. The large radius would be 2 times r1. So its circumference would be 2 times 2r1 times pi. So it would be 4r1 pi. Well, how do these values compare? The circumference of the larger is double the circumference of the smaller.
Let's use the same line of thinking that we did in the beginning to justify finding the area of a circle. So let's consider breaking this uh, polygon down into its smaller triangles. And in order to find the area of a triangle, remember we use one half base times height, so that's why they have segment OM labeled as H. Since there are N triangles that are all congruent to angle AOB, I know that the measure of angle 1 will be 100 of, 180 over N. We did this earlier. Um, we know from earlier that X can, represent, can be represented as R times the sine of 180 over N. Let's do something similar to find the value of H. So in this diagram, H is adjacent to angle 1. R is the hypotenuse in triangle AOM. So I would use cosine. So cosine of 180 over N would equal X, whoops, H over R. So that means H is R times cosine 180 over N. So let's bring that over to the other screen. The area of triangle AOB is one half 2x times h. That's one half this base of 2x times this height of h. The 1 half times the 2x reduces to just x. And then notice how this x value, because I know it from here, was replaced there. Then they want us to substitute in this expression for h. So the area of triangle AOB is r sine of 180 over n times r times the cosine of 180 over n. Since there are n of these triangles, I would take this area of one of those triangles and multiply it times n. So I would have n times, and let me clean this up a little bit. I have an r times r, so that's r squared times sine 180 over n times cosine of 180 over n. And notice how our area includes this. So what happens to that value as n gets larger? Once again, I graphed it. And it looks very similar to the other graph. Notice what that y value is flattening out to. Once again, it's getting closer and closer to pi. So, if I look at this red underlined value from here, and I know that that's getting closer and closer to pi, then as n is getting larger, pi r squared is what this expression is approaching. So when n is very large, does the area of the n-gon ever equal the area of the circle? No. Same reason as for circumference. So let's use that formula to find area. In part A, I am given the diameter to be 36 inches, so I cut that in half to find the radius. I plug it in, I evaluate. In part B, 
I am given that a slice of circular pizza measures nine inches in length, and then I'm asked to find the area of the entire pizza. Well, let's visualize a slice of pizza. If they're telling us that this is nine inches, well, that's the radius. So the nine inch side of the pizza is also the length of the radius of the circle. So R is nine. I do pi times nine squared, giving me 81 pi. And when I evaluate that using 3.14 for pi, 81 times 3.14 is to the nearest square inch, 254.3 square inches. In this reflect question eight, it says, suppose the slice of pizza represents one sixth of the whole pizza. Does this affect our answer? No. Because all the length of the pizza gave us was the radius. And the radius wouldn't be changing depending on what fraction of the pizza one slice is. However, what additional information can I determine with this fact? I can use this information to find the area of one slice. And we'll be doing that later in this module. In this your turn number nine, I have a circular swimming pool with a diameter of 18 feet. That means that my radius is 9 to the nearest square foot. What is the smallest amount of material needed to cover the surface of the pool? That would be area equal to pi r squared. So pi times 9 squared, 81 pi, which I believe we already calculated somewhere. Yes, we did. It's 254.3. Square feet. If the radius of a circle is doubled, is the area doubled? Okay, so here's small. Let's make the small radius R1 again, and the large radius would be two times that, so that's two R1, and that means this area would be pi times r1 squared. The larger one would be pi times 2 times r1 squared. So that would be 4 times r1 times pi. Which means, no, the area would not be doubled, it would be quadrupled. 